ABC. It's me, Roger, with the records. I'm finally feeling a little better. Boy, I haven't been that sick in a long time. Yeah, that sucked. Um, I'm here for a couple things. Uh, first of all, playing in the background. Here, I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Um, got some new music up on Bandcamp. It's called Gone Again. Follow up to my other solo album, Real Gone. Download only. Um, yeah, you can burn it to CD if you want. It's free, whatever. Give me a couple pennies if you want or not. I don't care. Or Anyway, thought I'd let you know. Um, I thought I'd put this on CD for... But I changed my mind. But I was working with uh, Jeff in Canada. Jeff Blowing Double O Cabbage. Hey, man, if you're watching. And James Buttery. Hey, James. But I decided that that concept that we were working on was too good for this music, to be perfectly frank. Um, I don't I've moved on. I think I'm going to use that for the Sam project, the latest Sam thing. Um, if you're interested, I'll leave a link below to my Bandcamp page. Um, and, you know, check it out if you want. Um, and I still have CDs of Who Doesn't Fade, VC Production, more duets with Sandberg. That's all I'm going to say about that. And, um, you know, if you like what you hear. Yeah, great. All right, so, second thing I'm here to show are like records, of course. Well, cheers, everybody. Yeah, more, more brown ale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still cold, man. It's not, not quite spring here yet, but all right, whatever. Okay, so, first we have the new Yola Tango album. There's a riot going on. Um, now, I'm a huge Yola Tango fan going back, going way, way, way back, back to like the 80s, you know, they were kind of like our band at T.T. Bears in Boston, and I, hey Rob, is T.T. still there? I don't think it is, is it? Um, saw them a whole bunch of times, and you know, before they ever even had a record deal, you know, they had Anyway, so I'm like, oh yeah, Yola Tango is a new record. I just bought it. I bought it the day it came out, and um, I put it on. I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and, well, I wound up reading about it, and what it is is like kind of home recordings that the bass player kind of did, and sort of outtakes from other things that they sort of cobbled together into an album, and it's. It's a sonic mess, uh, despite, you know, getting, like, great, you know, engineers to mix and master this. The raw material is, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, this is disappointing to me. I'm going to hold on to it because, of course, I'm a Yola Tango fan, and, you know, it has its moments, you know, it has its charm, um, but it is not the new Yola Tango record of my dreams, to be honest. All right, this on their other hand is really great. Um, another band I'm really fond of, Why Oak. Their new album, The Louder I Call, The Faster It Runs. On uh, Merge. Uh, this is on Matador, their long time. Yeah, so this is on Merge. Um, they're given the deluxe gatefold treatment and um, it sounds like some expensive production. And their last album, Shriek, was one of my favorite pop albums of whenever they came out a few years ago. Um, and this is a really strong pop album too that builds on, you know, uh, let me put it this way. Um, you know, their first album is very guitar driven and then by the time they get to Shriek, that's very synthy, very synth pop, kind of 80s synth pop. I, I love it, it's a great album. This kind of ties together the whole thing where it really sounds like they're more like a band and less like sort of a production. As much as I love that record, this is this sounds like more like a band. And, um, I dig it. It's great. I love it. Um, all right, the rest of these new records are reissues. Uh, so thank you, Anthony Camploni, for reminding me that there is a that Superior Viaduct 
put out the second album from these guys, This Kind of Punishment. Uh, this is their second album, A Beard of Bees. They're a legendary, legendarily kind of obscure New Zealand band. This was originally came out on, on uh, Fly Nun in New Zealand in like 1984. Superior Viaduct put out their first self-titled debut album and also this second album. It may, that may be even all they did. I, I don't know. Anyway, good stuff. Um, kind of hard to describe. That first, this kind of punishment record is very like sort of Joy Division-esque. Um, yet with more piano and um, this seems like a big step forward to me. I don't know, it's it's still that kind of dour, piano-driven kind of art, art pop, post-punk art pop kind of thing. Um, but more, I don't know, experimental or something? I don't, this is great. A Beer and Bees, originally from 1984. Impossible to find here in the States, and so this reissue is very welcome on Superior Vida. They really do a nice job. My copy's a little noisy even after cleaning, but you know, what are you gonna do? Another label that does a really excellent job of reissuing hard to find records is Bureau B out of Germany. Um, this is the only held in record I haven't been able to find an original of, and it's the first one. Uh, Electronic Gorilla, I think it's called. Yeah. From when? 1974, uh, recently? This is a recent reissue from Bureau B. Bureau B is putting out all the Heldon and Richard Penhouse records, apparently, and uh, if this is any indication, they're doing a really nice job. Um, yeah, this is great. I mean, I just, I just love this 70s electronic music with electric guitar and drums. And, edgier than like Tangerine Dream and like the crowd rock kind of thing. Yeah, much more kind of punk even. Um, yeah, hell great. Glad to have that. You know, maybe someday I'll find an original. Who knows? You know, another, another, you know, another Bureau B <laughs> record and another, you know, I think I talked about this label last time, the Sky label out of Germany. That apparently in Germany you can find them, but not here. And Diana showed an original record that she found at a record fair. And I was just like, oh, that, wouldn't that be nice? And so I finally just broke down and bought the Bureau B reissue because I figured they would do a good job, and they do a good job. So the Cluster and Eno record from, uh, originally from 1977 on Sky. This, this came out in 2009, and it looks like they've kept it in print, which is nice, Bureau B. So that's another thing. They don't do a limited get it while you can kind of thing. Uh, and this is a beautiful, uh, well, crowd rock record, but more like ambient, ambient electronic crowd rock. It's still a cluster record. Um, although Eno's presence is definitely audible. Uh, really kind of a classic. There's a second one. I don't know that that's been reissued. That would be nice. Um, all right, that's it for new. Not that many. Um, this is kind of a new record, but I got it gently used at Grimey's, and so it was inexpensive. And I'm not, I'm not sure what I think of it. This is on Thrill Jockey. Uh, this is, oh god, who is it? It's um, Yoshimi from the Boredoms, Susie Ibarra, and um, Robert Aiki Aubrey Lowe. Synthesis, Electronic Sky, live at Roulette in New York, um, double LP called, what is it called? Uh, Flower of Sulfur, I think. Oh, I wanted to like this, I really, because I really like all those musicians. And, um, but to be perfectly honest, maybe it was the mood I was in, maybe I should put it on again. But when I put it on, I was like, okay. This, when is it going to start happening? I got to the second side. And like, there were moments, but like, you know, it's just one of those free improv things that just like kind of sits there. It's like some pleasant sounds, <coughs> but very little sense that they're actually playing together. And very, 
and very very little sense that like they're going from here you know, to, to there um, and maybe that's expecting too too much or, or something that it's not I'm expecting it to be something that it's not I I, I don't know I, I mean I guess you know I'm, I'm, I'm all about free improv um, but I also understand that it doesn't always work and, um, well you can hear for yourself yeah maybe this doesn't work All right, here's a here's a rock record, prog rock classic. Been looking for this for a, a while, right? and it's not like it's a rare record. It's just that people tend to want silly money for it, and I'm it, it's not that great a record. It's the Captain Beyond record with the lenticular, you know, 3D cover. And, um, is it their self-titled? Yeah, I think it is their self-titled debut. Um, it's got some writing, which is actually kind of funny. It says, Rainbow Frog Demon. I guess that's, that's this guy. It's the Rainbow Frog Demon. Um, so yeah, Captain Beyond, American Prog Band. This is on Capricorn from 72, 1972. Uh, a little wanky at times, but, but good. Good, I, and I like having that original cover, and not I, I found it at Grimey's and it had that writing on the cover, and so it was cheap, it's like twenty bucks. You know, I've seen people want like fifty bucks for that record. I, I'm not paying fifty bucks for that record. Okay, I'm not. Cheers, here's Grimey's. If you hit it at the right time, you'll, you'll find things. You know, but they don't last long. All right, I got this at that Allison's record shop place that I've talked about. I had a full card, so I got 10 bucks off this. John Coltrane Quartet plays on Impulse from, when is this from? 1965? Now, this is not an original with the laminated cover. This is like a 1968 repress, like a first posthumous repress. Um, sounds really nice. Um, this is classic. I mean, that 1965 quartet stuff is just great. And, you know, he's playing, like, kind of kind of dubious standards here, like Chim Chim Cheree, and, which he tries to turn into a sort of my favorite thing sort of thing. And, and it works, you know, but um, it's a little bit... Yeah, maybe his heart isn't totally into it. But the playing is just... I mean, he... This quartet was so finely honed at this point, they could play the phone book and it would be awesome. And um, yeah, so like I've said before, if I see Coltrane Records, it's hard to, hard to pass up. All right, I found this at, uh, oh, we're at another place. Um, it's a somewhat obscure record, I think. It's a, it's a Bill Evans record on Columbia. Um, Living Time, Bill Evans with the George Russell Orchestra. Uh, from, uh, night, uh, when is this from? Oh. oh, 1972? Again, 1972? So yeah, Bill Evans in the 70s. And then, but this is really a George Russell record because all the music is by George Russell. And it's his ensemble. Or an ensemble assembled by George Russell. And, you know, there's just killer players in this band. I would huge band. Jimmy Drewfrey and Sam Rivers on flutes and oboe. Sam Rivers on oboe. Jimmy Drewfrey on clarinet. Howard Johnson on bass clarinet. You know, Ron Carter on bass. Um, Tony Williams on drums. Blah, blah. Anyway. It's a promo. Not white label, but it's a promo copy. Um, this is a weird record. It's, you know... Not surprising that it didn't like sell well, and you would not even recognize it to be a Bill Evans record at all. Um, sometimes few years until like a sort of a big band does bitches brew sort of thing, but it's it's George Russell and it's it, it's angular and spiky and, and it's not it's not an easy listen. Um, but I'm really I'm I'm excited about it. It seems to be, seems like a relatively obscure record. Um, I, I don't know. And here, here's another guy I love. I see his records, and I don't already have it. I, I 
picked him up because he's a great player. Pat Martino live on the Muse. Um, recording 1972. Hey, that's the theme here is 1972. Um, not familiar with this rhythm section. Uh, Ron Thomas on electric piano, Tyrone Brown on electric bass, Sherman Ferguson on drums. But they cook, they cook. If you're a fan of electric piano, Fender Rhodes electric piano that's all over this. And Pat Martino is just a killer guitar player. He's one of these dudes that is just a wire, his guitar, a wire, and an amp. You know, no effects, no wah wah pedal, no nothing. Just like his fingers, you know, and he's incredible. And without being like a big chops meister, a big show off kind of thing, because I hate that. I hate that stuff. He's not like that. He's, he's really good. Really good. Um, okay, uh, found this one. Yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, this is kind of a big VC phase. I, fave, I think. I've seen it in the in the VC. Um, not an original. I don't think... Does anyone out here have an original of this? Black Renaissance. Originally came out in Japan. Like, a really small edition, apparently. <clears throat> this is the Love and Hate reissue from 2011, I think. So, Black Renaissance is basically a um, Harry Whitaker which he put together himself to for this, put it out in Japan, uh, but with Woody Shaw on trumpet, Azar Lawrence on tenor soprano sax, David Schnitter on tenor sax. Oh, I have a David Schnitter record, that's pretty cool. Um, Harry Whitaker on piano, Buster Williams on bass, Billy Hart on drums, Howard King on drums, and Tumi, percussion, Earl Bennett on percussion, and um, some singing. Um, yeah, this is great, you know, spiritual jazz, you know, that sort of, you know, black renaissance, that Afrocentric, black power kind of stuff that um, everybody loves. Now, anyway, I ask about anyone out there having an original because when I'm reading the liner notes here and it talks about how the, one of his friends or one of the bandmates who had the original tapes, his house burned down and the tapes were lost. So I don't know and they don't say where they what source this is from and it I gotta say it doesn't sound great you know but I don't know I don't know where they I don't know what they used and you know apparently not the masters so anyway an original super duper rare apparently um, and really great great music regardless regardless all right just a few more things here speaking of Woody Shaw found a a couple of white label promos on Columbia again. A couple Woody Shaw records. I've got a Rosewood from 1978. This has uh, Clint Houston on bass, Carter Jefferson on sax, Joe Henderson on sax, Steve Trey on trombone, Woody Shaw, of course, on trumpet, Victor Lewis on piano, I believe. And then a uh, follow-up from 1979, Woody 3. Oh, what a terrible cover that is. Terrible. Okay, a white label promo. Uh, similar band with James Spaulding. Um, Renee McLean, Curtis Fuller with Steve Therese on two trombones. Alan Gums on piano. Buster Williams again. Victor Lewis on drums. Sorry, I guess Victor Lewis plays drums. Yeah, anyway. So, these things are so late 70s jazz on a major label. The sound is very, very nice. I think produced these. Um, Michael Kuskuna. Um, you know, nice, nice pro, big studio sound, um, but no fussy overdubs or anything like that. Just in straight up jazz. Um, you know, at the time, I would have thought, oh, that's way too straight ahead for me, uh, you know. But now that I'm an old fart, I, you know, I, I like that stuff. All right. Speaking of old farts, here's, um, you know, this guy's not an old fart. Pa Paulino da Costa Agora on Pablo. Pablo, though, was kind of the nursing home of old fart big band era guys, like Count Basie and um, another white label promo. This was like a real anomaly for the label. Um, a real Afro-Cuban thing. Um, 
with you know, young guys led by Paulino da Costa. I remember seeing Chris Cole, uh, John Coltrane 68, showing this and thinking, wow, a record on Pablo that makes you know, the fraternal order. Um, and it's not something you see around a lot. You, you see a lot of those, like, you know, Ella Fitzgerald records from Pablo all over the place. Oscar Peterson. Not this. So when I saw this, picked it up, and it's an excellent, you know, Brazilian Afro Cuban thing. You know, it's, just, it's great. Great. Super awesome. Okay, finally, one more record I found sealed for like $8 or something like that. And I'm like, I don't know, it looks like sort of private press, new age thing. I, I can go for that. And I look on Discs, Discogs, and I haven't looked it up. I haven't logged in and looked it up, but when I looked up it on, looked it up on my phone, it said there was one copy available for hundred dollars. I'm like, okay, well I'm getting this. And David Debris, Evening Tide, from uh, 1988 on CAS Records, which I believe is his own private press thing. Um, Carm, I'm looking at you. I possibly John Coltrane 68 would know about this record. It's really nothing all that special, at least not, not to my ears, and it's, we're well into the digital DX7 world, and if like, those sounds offend your ears, you're not going to like this. Um, although I think it's very tastefully well done, and he's a guitarist, um, and um, what can I say, I have a quite sizable collection of these sorts of records, and uh, you know, I like them. I like them. It's the kind of thing that the VC has done to me. You know? Because before the VC, I would have been like, oh, what is this cheesy crap? I have no idea. I'm going to pass it on and go get you know, some, something I, I already know about. You know? you know what I mean? All right, that's it. That's all I got. Um, if you're enjoying this noise, the link will be below. Gone again. Um, yeah, I've got some other stuff in the pipeline. I'll keep you posted. Take care, everyone. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.